Hey everyone, it's Ken with Ken's Creations. Well, during HSN's craft week, I know a lot of people were buying the Wild Orchid Cricut Explorer. However, when I was watching back the videos, a certain product jumped out at me and it was the Craftwell eBrush system. Now, I really liked this system because it uses your markers and it uses an air compressor to do designs on paper, fabric, and many other mediums. Now, I used to have a spray gun. It was the Color Art spray gun and it used canned air and it used these little paint pouches. It was really messy. Um, it got clogged and I was not a huge fan of it, so I ended up getting rid of it. So I'm really excited to be able to use my everyday markers and the compressor and see what the results are. Now in this video, what I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and show you what comes in the box, how to appropriately load the gun, and then also my final reviews on some of the test sprays. So let's first take a look at what comes in the box and then we'll go from there. So as I just mentioned, the Craftwell eBrush system is $99 and that's at this time of taping. Now, if you use a 15% off coupon at HSN, it brings it down to $85, which is still a pretty big investment. However, if it works as designed, it would be a very versatile tool that uses a lot of different markers. So what comes in the box for that 99 price point? The first thing you're gonna pull out is your e-brush air compressor. Now the air compressor has a power button. It has three different spray levels. It's got the uh, start button for the air compressor to start on the side. You have a port for your AC adapter. You have a spout for the tubing. Now this tubing will run from the compressor to the actual handgun. On the back here, you have a battery compartment. Now the battery compartment does not come in this box. It's an additional purchase. However, if you're taking this to crops and to a lot of places where you do not have an outlet, it might be worth the purchase. The next thing is your tubing. Now the tubing is about three feet long. You can get the same tubing at Lowe's or Home Depot if you want a longer tubing. Now this actually will plug in or go right here and it will lead to your actual spray gun. The spray gun, your port plugs in there and then the air sprays out here against the marker. This here doesn't actually push down. You actually have to pull it back and push it down. The next thing it came with is your adapter, which will plug in right there. And they give you three Spectrum Noir pens to test this out. So you get a green, a blue, and a red. Now what pins does this support? So the first one, these are the adapters that will actually end up going on your pen. The one that um, says SN on it is for your Spectrum Noir, which are these pens. The next one has a CP on it, and that is for your Copic. They give you one for, it says PC, which is your Prismacolor. The one that says SP is for your standard Sharpie. The one that says TB is for your Tombow. And AD is for your Chat Pack. Now that is the first thing I will say I am disappointed about the machine is right now it only supports those markers. Hopefully they'll be coming out with more adapters because I do have other pens that I would like to use in this. Being a close to my heart representative, I would love to see their pens able to fit into one of these adapters since I have so many of them. So that's what comes in the box. What I wanna do now is go ahead and show you how to hook up this machine and how this machine works. It doesn't have a big learning curve. However, one part to it is putting the adapters on and the pens in. And a lot of people have had issues with that. So I do wanna show you that. And then I wanna give you my overall review of the machine. So let's take a look how to hook it up. So let's go ahead and get the eBrush system set up and ready to use. Now, one thing that comes in the box is the eBrush owner's manual. It's very short owner's manual, but it does give you a step-by-step -step process of what I'm gonna show you right now. Um, so this comes in the box. One other thing is because this is an air compressor, you wanna make sure you read this that says that you should not leave your air compressor on for more than 15 minutes when not in use. And that's just because it can burn out the compressor. So make sure you read that as well. Now, following the owner's manual or this video, it's fairly easy to hook this system up. So the first thing is you wanna plug in the AC adapter on the side here. Then using your tubing, you wanna go ahead and put one side of the tubing on here. Now this is brand new tubing, so at first it's going to be a tight fit. So don't be alarmed, but you wanna make sure it's on there really good so it doesn't fall out during the compression. The other end of the tubing is gonna go on your airbrush and it's just going to slide in right there. And once again, you wanna make sure that's a nice tight fit. 
And at this point, we can go ahead and turn on our system. Now on here, there is a power button. All your lights come on to let you know it's on. This light here, if you have the battery compartment, this here will be illuminated and let you know if it needs to be recharged or not. When you push the play button, your compressor is going to start. And it's always going to start at the lowest setting. Push it again, medium, and high. As you can see on the high setting, it will move if you have a slick surface. So you might want to put some felt on that to keep it in place. If not, it's going to be moving around. Once you have your compressor on, all you have to do on your e-brush is pull it towards you. And then that is what gets your air flowing. Now, once you have it set up, we can go ahead and put the adapters on. They come with six adapters right now. We're going to start with the Spectrum Noir. As you can see, there's two little notches and there's two little notches on the gun. You want to go ahead and line those notches up. And when you do this, if you're looking at the brush, this will be facing on the back of the brush. And you just want to go ahead and twist it until it locks into place. And at this point, you should have be able to put your marker facing down and it should come right in front of that. So that's how you put the adapter on. Now I'm going to go ahead and show you how to insert the marker and use it. So let's take a look at that. So now let me show you how to put the pen into the adapter. You're going to want to take your owner's manual on page four and follow these instructions precisely. Most problems with this system is because your marker is not put in correctly. So we want to make sure we're following this diagram right here. So starting with your e-brush system, we're going to go ahead and take the marker and basically the chisel edge, just like that, you're going to stick it into your adapter. And I always, push it just like that. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and turn it on and do a test spray. And I'm going to show you a couple things here. So when you go to test spray this, it should spray right onto the sheet, as you can see. If you do not have it far enough, let's say it's up here, you're not going to get anything. And that's where a lot of people are having problems. So make sure you push it all the way down. If it's too far, you'll get a splatter. So this one's actually, this pen's just perfect. So that's the number one problem people have. If you are having problems with your pen and cannot get it adjusted right, make sure to go to Craft Wells YouTube page where they have tutorials on all of the adapters. So let's take a look at the test sprays on this. So this is at the lowest spray. We go up to the medium. And then the highest. So as you can see, it does a great job. Once again, we have our low, medium, and high. So now that we've done that, let's go ahead and spray some through a template and see how it turns out. So now let's go ahead and do a test spray using this template. I'm going to go ahead and turn on my eBrush system and I'm going to go to the highest setting. Now keep in mind, the further away you are with it, you're going to get a nice spray. The closer you get, a little bit more intense, so as you can see. And I'm just going to go ahead and do red, green, and blue, and then we'll see how it turns out. All right, so as you can see, the more I kept in one area, it got darker. You can overlap your colors, and let's go ahead and take a look at how this looks. And there you are, a nice great look. And as you can see, I wanted to show on the green, if you don't go intense, as you can see there, it gives it a nice um, light airbrush. Obviously with the red, I went really intense. You got that vibrant, beautiful colors. And as you can see where I overlapped the blue and the red gave me that nice purple color. So that is on the Spectrum Noir. Let's go ahead and take a look at how Sharpies do. So for the Sharpie spray test, I'm going to be using the Paisley one. Now, um, just for those who want to know, these are the spell binders um, for, uh, I think, embossing machines, but I love using them as stencils. So I have paisley, tulips, butterfly, flowers, and they're perfect for template use. So as you can see, um, that's what I'll be using. So I'm going to use that, and I'm going to be using these colors using that template, and let's take a look at what the results look like. All right, so there is that, as you can see. Now, if you were using this for a project, I would probably do something to mask your sides unless you're going to be cutting this. 
Um, but we did all those colors. Let's remove this. And there is your finished results. So this is a lot of fun to use, everyone. I actually really could see how this could be addictive. You could use this for backs uh, on your card. You could use it for your backing piece. So really easy to use as long as once you get the knack of the pens and how far to put them in or take them out, you get some beautiful results. Now I just use templates, but you could use these on ornaments. You could use them on plastic, metal. The possibilities are endless. So um, as you can see, really good results. So let's go ahead and go to my final thoughts. So there is a few test sprays for you. I did one other test spray here with a Copics marker. And as you can see, the results are just stunning. Um, it is just one of my favorite projects so far that this machine has done. So we have the Copics. We, of course, have our Sharp Sharpie test spray. And then we have the Spectrum Noir. Now, the one thing I did want to point out is what it would look like if your pen was put in incorrectly. So as you can see, making sure your pen is in this properly is going to give you the most results. This top one, the pen was put in backwards. It still worked. However, the results are not as dynamic as the ones when it was inputted properly. So make sure you're definitely checking out that. The other thing I want to mention is just obviously, once again, the closer you get, the more dynamic, um, a little bit further away is going to give you more of that little airbrush look. Another project I did with this is this Halloween card. I used a black uh, Copics marker on the side here just to give it a nice subtle look. So I absolutely love what this machine is capable of doing. Now, what kind of materials can you use this machine on? So you can spray paper, cardstock, vellum, vinyl, grunge board, wood veneers, balsa wood, chipboard, fun foam, leather, canvas, and metal. And if you have a food safe pen, you'll be able to also use that marker and spray on cake. So I absolutely love how versatile this machine is. So my final thoughts on the eBrush. Um, for the price point, you're gonna have to use this a lot. Even with a coupon, it's $85. And compared to a traditional airbrush system, I'm not sure if it could beat something like that. I believe a, a traditional airbrush system is gonna give you much better colors, designs, um, and versatility. However, for those not wanting to go as extreme as a full on airbrush system, and the fact that you have probably a lot of these markers in your craft room, this might be a good tool just to give you that different look on your mediums. Um, so after using it today, I definitely will be keeping this item in my craft room to use just to give me some versatility when I'm creating projects. So I highly recommend taking a look at it if it's something that you want to use on projects or just kind of give you a versatile look in all of your um, items in your craft room. So um, definitely, I think it is a good purchase. So make sure you guys are checking out my blog for all the latest updates on my reviews. You can check that out over at www.creativeken.blogspot. Dot com. Make sure you're subscribing to this YouTube channel where I post all of my craft reviews, projects, design space, and silhouette um, tutorials. Make sure you are checking out my Twitter page, my Pinterest page, my Instagram page, and uh, also I sell Close to My Heart. So make sure you're checking out my Close to My Heart store where you can help support Ken's creations. All right, I hope this review gave you guys an idea whether you want to buy this amazing machine or not, or if it will even be something that you would use in your day-to-day -day craft projects. So I would definitely recommend go check it out over at www.hsn.com. Hopefully you'll get it, put it in your craft rooms, and definitely go out there and make something magical with it. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Have an amazing day.